So for those of you that this is your first, you picked a great show. And uh, he is world renowned, and I think you're going to see why tonight. So, uh, and if you happen to be in Connecticut, if you happen to be in Connecticut, make sure you stop by and see them. Uh, Sparky's going to be there. When are you going to be there at his restaurant? He's going to be waiting tables at his restaurant. <laughs> The 8th of May, so if you happen to be going that way, make sure you let us know, okay? Take lots of pictures. So on behalf of our staff of 18, thank you very much for coming out. And of course, this is Kevin's lovely wife. Right? I do uh, remember my right? chef. So, without further ado, it's all up to you. All right, hi folks, how are you? My name is Kevin Garcia. Hi Kevin. How are you? Uh, it's a pleasure to be here, it's a pleasure to be invited, it's a pleasure to be considered. Um, I've been able to do lots of really fortunate things as a chef, as a cook, um, over the past 25 years, maybe more. I'm not keeping count anymore. Um, but you know, when you start out as a cook, it's not so glamorous. Uh, it's a lot of work. It's not a... Uh, Someday when I write a book, I'm going to call it Cooking the Last Bastion of Slavery. It's a, <laughs> it's a really difficult career. Um, but then when you, keep, when you stick with it, just like anything, you're able to see the perks of all your hard work. And this is certainly one of them. I'm staying in a lovely place. I get to bring my fiancé. And it's a pleasure to teach and to show my craft because people have as of late, really enjoyed it and want to learn more and more and more. It's become almost chic to be a chef. Um, you know, like you have your sports figures and your actors and then some musicians and now this chef thing has really taken off. So I'm enjoying the ride. <laughs> but it's been hard to get there. So, like anything. so one of my fortunate travels when I was 23 brought me to uh, a place in Tuscany called Luca, and there was a restaurant, it was called Vipore, and the chef that was the owner had been there for years, it, it was a 17th century villa, it was amazing, and I was working at a very popular restaurant in Manhattan called Coco Pazzo on 74th and uh, Madison, and it was owned by a very well-known restaurant, his name was Pino Longo. And uh, a few years previous, I had been working in Rhode Island where I went to school at Johnson & Wales University. And I did an event with the people that I was working for in, in uh, Rhode Island. And I met this man named Cesare Casella, who they had me help. And it was sort of a, a harbinger of what was to come, but I had no idea. So forward two years later, the chef that I was working for um, with decided to move on and do his own restaurant and begged me to go and I said, you know what, I'm comfortable and my dad gave me some great advice. He goes, stay with the owner, not the chef. Consequently, that chef's restaurant closed yep. and within months. And I stayed on and as a, maybe a reward, I was sent to Italy to work at Cesare Casella's Vipo. And I was there for six months and it was one of the greatest experiences I ever had. It, was, uh, it had a Michelin star. It actually received that Michelin star when I was there and the chef was thrilled, jumping up and down, uh, hugged me. Um, so he had this salad on the menu, and they call it uh, Uova Carne Seca del Pantorno, Ensalata Uova Carne Seca del Pantorno, which is, Ensalata is a salad, Uova is eggs, Carne Seca is dried bacon, pancetta, pancetta, a lot of people ask what's the difference between pancetta and bacon. Pancetta is cured, and bacon is smoked, basically that's it. So, and then Pontormo is the region in Tuscany that I was from. So, I wanted to see how to make the salad. I saw what they did, they took the bacon and they added some eggs, and, but the trick was the vinaigrette, which I have all the ingredients for, but I think you can remember because it's pretty basic, and I have, you, you have the recipe. So, I said, Cesare, what's, how do you make this vinaigrette? He goes, I don't know. <laughs> I, I, what do you mean? It's your recipe. It's, he goes, no, it's Mama. It's oh, Mama's oh, recipe. Oh, <laughs> it's like, you don't know this recipe? She goes, he goes, nope. I said, well, can you give it to me? He goes, nope, you got to get it from her. <laughs> so I ask her, and she doesn't want to tell me. 
So for about three days, I followed her around the kitchen, and she would make it like this. She didn't <laughs> uh, and I got so frustrated that I just didn't know what to do. So eventually, I think I saw her. She let me get a, an idea of the ingredients. So this salad is very dear to me. And so I've ended up calling it Ensalata Vipere. And I do it occasionally at some of the restaurants I worked at, thinking it's not going to sell, it's not going to enjoy it. It's a really weird combination of things. But ultimately, it always sells really well. And the, of late, the restaurant I have it in, in Morel, it sells so much that I, I'm shocked and I'm, I'm thrilled. But I ask never to have any um, modifications on the salad because I'm trying to represent someone. And, you know, if someone doesn't eat meat, I'll do it without meat, but it's not quite as dramatic. So, without further ado, I'll show you what to do. Now, when, you, when you're shopping for the salad, it seems pretty straightforward, but in cooking, the ultimate thing you can do to make something taste great is get the best ingredients you can find. Okay, if it takes time, you try an egg, you go to a farm, you get a fresh egg, you're already way ahead of the game. You know, the supermarket, who knows where, how, what those eggs are doing, where they're from. So you get the best eggs you can get. The lettuces. You can have an assortment of lettuces. You can buy it in the package that's been there for a week, or you can buy each green separately. You can find out who's growing them, you can grow them in your garden. So th then the salad becomes, then this whole thing becomes more special. So you get an assortment of greens, and then the vinaigrette. You have extra virgin olive oil. This happens to be from here, which is lovely. Um, the bacon. You can get domestic, you should get the stuff from Italy. That's, you know, they've been making it. You know, you can replace it with bacon if you can't find the pancetta. So that's with cooking in general. That's with everything you do. You try and do the best. You try and get the best, and you, and, and the best part of it is the, the journey to getting the best ingredients. So every time I do a dish, I know it's not perfect, and I know it can be better. Because I know that there's farmers and people making products and artisans who continually try and up their game. So it's an ongoing process, and it's fun to experience it and try and get it done. So here we go. Don't blink. <laughs> a little bit of extra virgin olive oil on the pan. A non-stick pan is preferable, but you know what they say about the Teflon, it's not so good. So, have a nice seasoned pan. Teflon is, you know, getting a bad rep. But it does wonderful things. So, a little bit of pancetta. The, the key here is you don't want to crisp this bacon. I'm going to make enough for a couple of hours. But this is going to be on the menu. Yeah. So, you let it wilt. I just say you don't want it crispy, you don't want it raw. It's already cooked, so you can eat it straight from this, this here. Chopped herbs, there's thyme, sage, rosemary, oregano. These are the hard herbs. Um, the petite herbs would be soft herbs like basil and parsley and chervil and chives. So, and typically they cure the pancetta with some of these herbs. So you're just going to sprinkle a little bit in there. I don't know if it's permeating the room already, but... So, I'm going to try and create an on-stick pan right here. There's olive oil and delicious. Oh. Okay. I want to set a monitor so you can't see them. So imagine there's a mirror there. So there you go. And then you take your egg, or two or three. And you don't want to overcook the egg. You want the egg to be become part of the dressing for the salad. So you want it to be just a softly scrambled egg. Now you know you can do this at home. I know you can do it. It's not bad. But it's unique. It's like a great breakfast salad or it's a great brunch salad because you got eggs and bacon. <laughs> bacon is not a meat, it's a spice. <laughs> that is my, my mantra. It's going down on my appetite. <laughs> so that's it. And then the vinaigrette. The vinaigrette. 
I didn't tell you this. I had to go to Italy more than Mama Rosa. <laughs> okay, it's four parts. It's a quarter part vinegar, red wine vinegar. It's a quarter white wine. Please use a good one. If you don't want to drink it that quickly. Um, balsamic vinegar and extra virgin olive oil. And there's a little bit of dried oregano and a sprig of rosemary and it lasts. And I put black truffle pate in. So they didn't have that, but I sort of made it a little more fancy, sexy if you want. Black truffles are great. And then you just dress it lightly. Could you use black truffle oil instead? You could. You could. Um, I try and avoid the oils. It's, I know, it's, that's me being so. I'm sorry. You can I just, use I white just, truffle I just oil. Know or I have it in my, my, uh, then then play with it. Yes, and play with it. So. And tell me, and then you got to say, I liked it with it. I liked it without it. I prefer yeah. white oil to black. It's yeah. just, you, yeah. you keep playing. All right, and then I like to season everything with a little salt. Be careful with the salt because pancetta is typically cured with salt, so it has a little salt here. So, you can serve it on a big plate, a little plate. You don't need to So you just mix it up. It, it lets off this really wonderful aroma. You know, you guys will have it in, in just in a matter of 30 minutes. And you want to incorporate that. So you don't want to overdress salad. You know, you treat it like a pasta. You don't want to overly dress the pasta either. You just want, when you're finished with it, the plate is clean. Maybe you can take a little piece of bread and finish the rest. <laughs> All right. And then this... The heat of the egg will sort of wilt the greens just slightly, but you want to serve it immediately. Mm. Now, I didn't bring a fork, but you guys can try it over this. <laughs> but you're going to have it in just a few minutes. Right. I brought a fork, I would eat it right in front of you. There you go. All right, so I encourage you to try this at home. It's not really outrageous. So that was a fast little demo. I don't want to keep you guys too long. You've been really attentive and lots of smiles. You guys are in a great situation here. It's nice of you to be here and come out for me.